Hey guys, so this should be a pretty brief one. In the last video I did on this 16 kilowatt hour battery, I said I would do a short follow-up video on how I got it to communicate with EG4 inverters. And not just that, but how I am hooking it to my home battery bank. So to hook this to my main battery bank, I hook it to the external bus bars that I have down below my wireway. And I've showed them in the past and I'll show you guys here. They are 1000 amp bus bars from Overkill Solar. Really nice bus bars, but... Yeah, so I hook, I have that hooked into my wireway into some other bus bars, but that makes it easy if I'm going to add any external packs like this one here. So that's how I have this hooked in. It is not communicating with the EG4 wall mount inverters that I have. So I already have them communicating to my inverters, and this is just hooked up in the background. So as far as the inverters are concerned, they have no idea that this battery is here. I have three outdoor EG4 wall mount batteries, two indoors, and then the smaller 100 amp version. All of those are communicating with my inverters, and this is not. The DIY packs that I had before that I built myself, actually they're gone now, I've got another little cabinet over there. They were not communicating. I have that uh, Dokan battery you guys might have seen in the last video. That's not communicating either. So the only things the inverters see as far as being able to monitor it, if you look on the monitoring app, are all of my wall mount batteries from EG4. So these will still charge and discharge with all of the other batteries, but like I said, you just won't be able to see them. That's option one. Option two is you could change everything to lead acid mode. So just charge and discharge via voltage. So the inverters won't be able to see an accurate state of charge that way unless you hook up a shunt and then you can monitor it that way. But otherwise, you will just have everything charging and discharging based off voltage. The reason I have it hooked up the way I do is I can still get an accurate state of charge this way. And if I'm all away from the house or whatever, I don't need a shunt to monitor the battery level. If I look and I see it's at 60%, it might be 58% in reality, but it's roughly that. So that's why I keep it the way I do. I like to be able to monitor it if I'm not here. So I hope that gives people enough information in that regard. And then as far as communication between this battery, if this was going to be the sole battery, or if you had one or two or three of these, and you wanted to hook them to an EG4 inverter, like a 6000 XP, a 12000 XP, how to get this to communicate with them. And that was actually pretty simple. I've never done that part with the JK BMS before, but once you've signed into the JK with the Bluetooth app that they have, and I showed you guys that in the past video on this battery, once you've signed in, you can go into advanced settings, and then you'll scroll down to CAN protocol. And I actually messed with some of the other protocols in there too, and some of the other things, but what you're focused on is the CAN protocol. That's the only important one. So when you go into that, if you scroll down, you can look for Lux Power Protocol. And I actually was, I, I looked at the 12,000 XP before. I had everything hooked up to the CAN port on this battery here and hooked up into the battery communication port on the 12,000 XP. And it was showing light is yellow. You guys can see it right there on the screen. And when that's the case, it has a fault, which is no battery communication. And everything was hooked up correctly. But then once I clicked the BMS over to that Lux Power protocol, everything started to communicate right away and it gave an accurate state of charge. So if somebody's just getting into this and they've just gotten one of these batteries here, once they reset their password, they'll be able to make changes to the BMS. So then you're just going to go into advanced settings like I mentioned before. And that's it. You just change the protocol. You may not have an EG4 inverter, but there's multiple other protocols in there. Pylon Tech is the most common protocol for most inverters. And that's about it. That is how I hooked this to my house battery bank. And yes, it does communicate with multiple different inverter types. But I mention this in almost every video when I talk about communication. Just because this can communicate with an EG4 inverter does not mean that it can communicate with EG4 batteries. EG4 batteries have their own specific protocol to talk to each other. So talking to the inverter is different than the language between battery to battery. So if you guys already have EG4 inverters and you're wanting to add something cheaper like this battery here, it is not going to communicate with EG4 batteries. So like I said, short and sweet. If you guys have any questions, you can leave them down below in the comments. I'll put a link to this battery also. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned.